All right, you clicked on this video knowing that we're talking about history and homeschool. Maybe that means you're nervous about teaching it or you love it and you're ready to nerd out with us. So today I've got David from History for the Ages with us to discuss all things history and how this can look in a homeschool setting. So welcome, David. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, thank you. I'm looking forward to this. I've been awesome. teaching history for 27 years now. So this whole new <laughs> journey of reaching homeschool is just kind of new and a little bit by accident, honestly. It just kind of all happened when we had to go to online teaching and I started to record my lectures for my students. Yeah. And then I put them on YouTube because they, they said, that's a good place to put them. Students can watch them. They worked well with our Canvas course shell and everything. And then I started to see that people who were not my students were watching my videos. And slowly I realized it was homeschoolers and started to reach out more to homeschoolers. And so it's been kind of fun. It's probably not all my audience, but it's a big chunk of my audience. Yeah. Well, and I love how accessible you make it. And I think that's how I connected with you because yeah. I, I saw it start popping up and I was like, what? who is this? Is this a homeschool guy? So again, let's let's be clear. You are not the typical homeschooler that we have uh, on here. Uh, not a homeschool parent, but you are a history professor and you've got so much experience in this area. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you said you've got a few people kind of mingling in with your regular audience on YouTube, which is really fun. Um, and I love how, again, how interactive you make it. You've got quizzes on there um, and you've got short videos, super short videos right. and super long videos, right. explainer kind of lecture type videos. Sure. So um, you guys will hear more about that coming up, but there's just a lot of stuff in there. So it's really yeah. cool. So I'm really glad to have you here today. Well, thank um, you. Let's dive in a little bit because history is one of those subjects that might bring up some mixed feelings for people when it comes to their own education. Uh, good memories of great history teachers, bad memories of uh, um, drudgery uh, and those uh, memorizing dates and stuff. So let's let's describe what it might look like. What, what would so, you say to somebody right. who had a not so great experience? So the first thing, one of the things I tell my students is if they memorize any dates in my class, I'm gonna be very unhappy with them uh, because that's not what history is about. And even at the younger age, even though I designed my videos and my lectures for my college students, I don't, even at the younger ages, I don't think that should be the focus of memorizing dates. Uh, so to me, it's just about, you know, showing people why things happen, making connections, teaching them how to think critically about events. I think that's kind of what makes history more fun. And the other thing I tell students to, to the people that did enjoy history is when you learn the history, it gives meaning so much more when you see things around you. Um, you know, or if you get a chance to travel, I use the example of like the D-Day beaches. And if mm -hmm. you know, if you don't know any history and you go to Normandy one day and you go to the D-Day beaches, it's sand and water. It doesn't mean anything to you. But if you know that 18, 19 year old boys laid down their life on that beach and you know the entire history of World War II, it resonates with you very yeah. powerfully. It's an it's emotional experience. So I think one way to make history more enjoyable to people is to do the storytelling, do the narrative um, and connect it with us today. Even when I teach my ancient history course, I have this whole playlist on early Western Sith, everything from pre-civilization through the Middle Ages. And students go, oh, this stuff had thousands of years ago. Does it impact us today? Absolutely. Our language, our religion, our laws, our politics, our words, even words we use in our day to day language from Greek mm -hmm. origins, for example. So I think when you connect it that way, it makes it a lot more interesting to people. And that's what I Absolutely. try to do in all my lectures, either the longer ones or the shorter ones, just to make a lot of those connections. And I love that point, like even with travel um, yeah. as homeschoolers, a lot of times there's more flexibility there. Yeah. Right. Whether it's close to home. I grew up in Virginia. And so a Jamestown, Williamsburg, like the whole Tidewater colonial area was just like amazing to me. Yeah. And then close to D.C., having all that close by. And now I live in South America, actually. And so we get okay. the chance to um, travel around here a little bit and kind of see other things and make those connections. And so wherever people are, small town, big city, cosmopolitan, yeah. able to travel and take those big trips or stay close to home and figure out a way to access museums, make sure. those connections however you can. And family um, history. Oh family. yeah, oh, that's, that's a good great way to, to make history interesting. You know, yeah. 
um, you know, wh where, where is my family from? And then you start digging and you start learning and then you really can make it very interesting topic to people. Yeah. So I don't think history should ever be, you know, to me, it's the most dramatic events that have ever unfolded. I mean, we live our world today in a pretty crazy world, right? And you're looking at the then day to day and I'm like, well, this is just stuff I cover every single day. I mean, yeah. we're talking about events that were as crazy as everything we're going today, even more dramatic. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I bring it to, to life for my students as well. I love it. Okay. Well, very cool. Well, okay. So for those who maybe have an adverse reaction to history when they're thinking about it because of their own experience, yeah. that's a really good uh, first step. What about for those who love it? Those of us history nerds who love it, what are some suggestions to help us to continue to foster that love of learning with kids as we homeschool? I know for me, I like, I love World War II, anything yeah. World War II, documentaries, yeah. historical fiction, stuff like that. We, we can take it from like a book study that we were mm -hmm. doing. Have you read um, The War That Saved My Life, Kimberly? No, that Kimberly one I haven't read, no. It's young adult, right? So not 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 going to be something that'll, that'll affect your students for the most yeah. part, but it's a good introduction yeah. to World War II for kids, yeah. you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, um, because it has to do with rationing the blitz, mm -hmm. evacuations, yeah. stuff like that. Sure. And then we get into, um, we went to Switzerland. We had some family who lived in Switzerland. So we got to go look and our kids said, what are those bunkers about? Oh, let me tell you about those bunkers. <laughs> Johnny course. Harris has a YouTube channel that we watch a little bit about uh, a lot of historical connections there. And he has a video about historical bunkers yeah. in Switzerland and stuff. So stuff like that. But what what else would you tell us in terms of making those connections? People who really love the history, it's easy. I mean, reenactments are great. That's another one. I just took, Ooh. I have a daughter, just took her to a U U.S. Revolutionary War reenactment. Um, and I think that's something that's a setting for a lot of people. Movies, I think, mm -hmm. are a great way for people who are history buffs. You go watch a movie and then, you know, my friends don't like seeing history movies with me, but because they're like, shut up, David. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of the fun part. If you're already yeah. a history buff, you could sit there and you can kind of analyze the movie and say, yeah, this is right and this is wrong. Uh, one of my more popular videos is actually the most popular one I made was on the Napoleon movie that came out. And I just kind of, I did the same thing with the Oppenheimer movie and just- I saw the Oppenheimer right, one. Yeah. I loved Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was a great movie. Napoleon yeah. movie, not so much. Um, but yeah, definitely that's, those are fun ways to do, to, to keep doing things. Museums are great. So for people who already enjoy it, just do more of the same. Reading novels, yeah. historical fiction is another one I think is great. Those are all good ideas. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, I On my channel, I tell people a lot about what we use for certain grades. And sometimes I'll get the comment, hey, but you didn't mention history or science. And I'm like, yeah, it just kind of comes with uh, the the stuff that we're talking about. It just kind of comes up yeah. from their questions, from their uh, interests, from whatever they're kind of into at that point. And it could be even like a book that they're reading that wasn't necessarily meant to be a history discussion sparking moment, but you know, it, yeah. it happens. Um, so. Well, now that you work with young adults, talk to us a little bit about some of the kind of anecdotes, if you've got any, about how you've seen a history education's impact, be it positive or negative, maybe some of them were homeschooled. Um, mm -hmm. How have you seen that in your students? So, you know, obviously teaching, I've been teaching college for a long time. And as I got to know my students who were homeschooled, I noticed they usually were some of my very best students. And one of the patterns I noticed is they were just eager to learn. Um, so I think that's one of the things. And they were very just curious, eager to learn, and they enjoyed learning more. Uh, so that's one thing I've noticed from a lot of the students that have come to me who were homeschooled. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag today in, in the classroom, in a college room. You've got some students who are just really there to want to learn. And then I have to be honest, there's some people there today in college who are just, they're not, they're not there really to learn, frankly. They're mm -hmm. there, or they're collecting financial aid, they're there because their parents want them to be. Um, and my opinion, even as a college professor, college isn't for everyone. And that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I literally have conversations like this with my students every semester. Go do vocational work. Go, you know, my parents never graduated high school. They made the American dream happen. Um, and so it doesn't necessarily, if it's not for you, that's okay. Um, and I think there's too much of this push that everyone needs a degree. Everyone needs to go to college to succeed. I actually don't believe that. And so for yeah. those students, I just kind of try to encourage them to find something else they might be passionate about and do. 
I think that's important to hear. Important yeah. to hear. Um, help your kids find what they love. Don't don't quash the the thing that they're yeah. excited about. If that happens to be history, great. If it's not, let yeah. them find. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you want good. some practical. You got to be pay the bills in yeah. life too. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. Okay. Well, um, your Western Civ curricula curriculum, and correct me, is that is that the right way to refer to it? Would, would you refer to yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, Civ unit studies curriculum. World? I mean, it, it the way I designed my unit studies is basically I took all the same stuff I would cover in my courses, and I just break it down through parts. So in, in all in chronological order from pre-civilization, then you have the early Mesopotamia, Egypt, uh, the Hebrews, the Greeks, the Romans, the Middle Ages. And so what I tell people is to go through the entire list, you would basically be taking my entire course of early Western Civ and then modern Western Civ. And I'm also working on some for the history of the Middle East. Um, so you could actually go through and take all of them. I don't know yeah. from like a technical standpoint in terms of if a homeschooler uses it and how every state has their own rules and laws, you know, will this be considered official curriculum or not? So I tell people this is for the knowledge, right? If you want to learn all this, you will have a better understanding of Western Civ. If you take all, watch all my lectures, do all the unit studies. And then I tell people, if you just want to watch the lectures without the unit studies, the lectures are all free, right? They're all up on yeah. YouTube and people can, just watch them. It was actually the unit studies came more recently. It was people were asking for it. They were saying, yeah. David, do you have a unit study for this? I'm like, no, I will pay you. I'm like, oh, okay. And sure. so I started to create yeah. some and they, 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 people are buying them um, and yeah. they, they use them. And that's great. I'm happy. It's because I get it because then if you're a homeschooler, okay, you watch my lecture, but you got to see, did the student learn anything? Right. And so the way I designed them is, you know, they have objective questions and short answer questions and charts and graphs and all these kind of different things, map exercises. So if a parent is then doing this, they could say, yep, you know, student, my, my kid learned this. Um, mm -hmm. And then they can mark whatever box they need to for that homeschool. Exactly. Program. And yeah. for those watching, I have picked up this curriculum that David's talking about, and I'm going to plan on starting to use it next year with my oldest. Um, and, you know, she's going to be in seventh grade. So it, this would be an early introduction. Early. But she enjoys this Yeah, stuff. I usually say most of my stuff better for like 12, 13-year-olds and older. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've had parents tell me like their 10-year-olds have watched my videos and picked up on it and can figure mm -hmm. it out. And it's just, you know, and I also tell parents always watch the stuff with your kids first. You know, it's, it is, you know, we're dealing with wars. We're dealing with battles. We're dealing with some intense stuff. I think it's all appropriate for a 13-year-old. Um, but every parent has to, of course, watch it and decide yeah. for themselves. But yeah. I and as definitely. far as the standards and what people need to box check, um, it's yeah, like you said, it's going to be different for every state. Right. But I would encourage if you do pick them up, brush through them. I mean, they're they're well laid out where you can kind of see, OK, great. This topic is covered. This topic is covered. This map skill is covered. This geography right. skill is covered. And you can go through your state standards, whether you're in Virginia and you use standards of learning, if you're in Texas and you use TEKS, if you use right. Common Core, you can find those, print them out, right. have a list, have right. them on hand, and just check to make sure that you're tech hitting those topics right. that your kiddo needs to learn about. Now, for those of us who maybe don't care as much what the boxes are, just that they've got a really good understanding, this that's is, fine. This this, is I think that's the perfect group. If you, I mean, I could promise anybody who watches all my lectures, does all those unit studies, would have a great understanding of all of Western Civ and the history of the Middle exactly. East. Exactly. I, mean, I love it. The, yeah. And I've also now got them all professionally closed captioned now. Nice. Um, yeah. Okay. So that, that worked out well. So before they were closed captioned, but, you know, iffy. Um, so now at least yeah. all my, not all my videos, but all the ones that would be part of the unit studies are closed captioned. Some of my shorter awesome. two minute videos and all those, they may not be perfectly closed caption. Um, and that's the other thing. I do have like playlists, just like two minute videos. And those are good for yeah. younger people. And if you just want exactly. two minutes on the Rosetta Stone, that's a popular yeah. one. And, and that's, yeah, this is an, a great thing to put in your back pocket. Um, this is uh, one of those extra resources that even if you're not going to buy unit studies, and you're maybe pulling from another curriculum or something like a book curriculum, mm -hmm. um, Put this in your your 
you know, save a playlist. Let's let's do that. Save a playlist and bring in those extra videos when you need to. Yeah, exactly. My other plan that I'm going to do with yours is I've got, uh, I'm in Nearpod. I work with Nearpod. And so mm-hmm. Nearpod is a fantastic educational tech tool that you can grab these topics from. So once she does your, your study for a certain topic, I'm going to grab a Nearpod lesson. And there okay. are some um, assessments in there as well. So that we can kind of keep it interactive, keep it fresh, keep it fun, um, and just mix things. These units don't have to be stale book stuff. No, um, I love no. yours and because that's it's one all of the things I've heard a lot is that my my child doesn't like to read a lot, but these are videos that they learn from. And I, I think reading is important. You know, obviously, it's an important skill to have, but I I want people to learn. So if that's an option for some, great. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, I've got a little bit of an idea that I want to run past you. One way that I've been toying with teaching history, um, especially for the younger ones, I have 10, 8, 6, and 4 right mm-hmm. now, is bringing history in through inventions and architecture. Okay. So, you know, let's go with uh, printing press, penicillin, steel, sure. the U.S. highway system, you know, whatever happens to be in front of you. We're at the doctor's mm-hmm. office and we are getting a shot for something if we're driving yeah. on a road trip in the U.S., yeah. you know. That sort of thing where, hey, where did that come from? Who made yeah. this thing? Let's talk about it. That's- what would you say to maybe, uh, I don't know, I want to plant this seed in your mind. Eventually, I would love to see somebody create a curriculum around, you know, an architectural That's interesting. So, or- like, I have a video, like my top five inventions in history um, as one of my videos. It's not in any of my unit studies, just one of those videos I made mm-hmm. that I thought would be interesting. I'm more personally a fan, honestly, of doing things chronologically. Mm -hmm. Um, All these other, like you said, you know, you could do, I could do a a curriculum on totalitarianism, right? Mm -hmm. And talk about that. Um, But I think it's more effective. And I have one, you could do just World War II, right? Or you could pick, you know, you could pick food, right? And you Mm -hmm. could do history around food. And I think those things are fun and a great way to learn. But I think those are after you first have the narrative. Mm -hmm. And those are things would be things you could add later on as additions to, I think are great um, as a deeper dive into various history topics because it's fun. I mean, because somebody may just like, you know, and the History Channel's done some of these, like, you know, they had a series first, it was The Men Who Made America. I don't know if you've seen it. And then they they went to all these of the cars that made America. Yeah. And you learn a lot of history that way. And yeah, you yeah. could do a whole course on cars and and, and, and cover that. Food uh, would be another one. Art would be another one. Um, architecture inventions. I like that idea. So anything that, that that's fun for people, I think yeah. they could do that. Um, you just you'd have to like cut and paste from a lot of different sources to bring it all together. Uh, right. But yeah. And cool. it would be it'd be hard for one person to just to make because then you'd have to make like 100 different once oh, yeah. and for there it's i think like parents can find something they want and easily and even if they do topically i would still do it chronologically if mm-hmm. you want to do architecture start from stonehenge and right. then do stonehenge and then do the ziggurat and then do the the pyramids and then the parthenon and then the Colosseum. even there is a better way to do it i think yeah I love it. I just, I, I feel like there's so much out there that people can choose from. And a lot of times when we start out homeschooling, we've got these littles and we're like, well, what do I do for history? You, you want to slot them into what public schools are doing. And there's just so much more interesting stuff out there. Um, And I I hope people will um, take your advice and keep it fun. Keep it interesting. um, Keep it chronological when possible. Um, And I would even add, you know, keep it kid led as much as possible, have them um, say, Hey, I'm interested in this thing. Tell me more about it. What can I do um, to, or where could I learn about this? Um, So having some of those things to pull from is really important. Yeah. Um, Awesome. All right. Well, David, thank you so much for all your insight today. It's really fun. I hope people are going to have some questions for you. I think they will. So can you tell us where we can find the curriculum you created and the name of your YouTube channel just one more time, which is sure. So the YouTube (laughs) channel is David and history for the ages. Um, and, um, all my material is there. I've created a couple videos, including one with a free sample video. And maybe, um, you can just link it in the description of your video here. And, um, and somebody could literally walk through and see how they do it. You could find everything on teachers paying teachers as well. Um, I do tell people the teachers paying teacher site, it's a lot more expensive than if you just 
buy me direct through you directly. So it's just David and history for the ages at gmail.com. And you'll get all that information in the video link as well, because teachers paying teachers just takes like 50%. Oh, so <laughs> if you buy from me directly, shoot me an off an email, um, PayPal, Zelle, whatever. I email you the PDFs and that's been working the best way. Uh, and so everything's going to be on, and I have a Facebook page as well, just called history for the ages. And I just kind of use that as well as a place to just share information for a different audience. Uh, you can find me there as well, but the best place is go on YouTube and look for those videos on my unit studies is in, in curriculum and stuff. And then all everything's in the descriptions there, all the links, everything you need and help some families. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, David, very fun. Thank you so much. Right. Um, as we wrap, what yeah. are you looking forward to in the next six months? It's always fun to hear what people have on their mind, whether professionally or personally, whatever you want to share. What's going oh, on in the I'm next six months? I'm just going to do more of the same, honestly. I'm still working on more unit studies for the history of the Middle East. Um, way down the line, I want to do some U.S. history things, but that's probably not till I retire and have a lot of time because this is always, you know, I'm a full time chair of the history department type thing. This was just kind of a little hobby, honestly, at first. And it's it's growing. I'm up to like 15,000 subscribers now. So yeah, it's getting a little bigger and I'm getting some people and getting more unit studies sold. So, you know, very a little cool. bit at a time, just I, I do it. You know, I have a family as well. So it's not this isn't my priority in life, to yeah. be honest with you. It's, right. you know, I have my family's number one. Then you got work and then. This is if I have time. We've had, we've yeah. we, you wanted me to do this for a while, right? Till even have time yeah. to just even do thirty it minutes. It's just I have to make like if there's nothing else going on, I have some time to work on it and study. I do, but I'm also very very quick to reply to emails and stuff. If you know somebody just today uh, emailed me, is like you sent me all the unit studies. I deleted the email uh, with all the attachments, and I just <laughs> email every day. I sent it back. Okay. I'm very happy. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, oh, always, well, cool. I, that that's one thing I am always on top of. So awesome. And then All yeah, right, people well, can just email me, leave questions, comments on any of my videos, all of that good stuff, and be happy to perfect. to work with them. Will do. All right, you guys. Well, get in touch with David. Say all thank right. you to him for being here. Um, and to those of you who are watching, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Nobody's told you, you yesterday. Thank you. Thank you um, for happy teaching, guys. All right. Yeah. Bye, everyone.